Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy Witherby and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you all for joining me today. It's great to have you along. As you're jumping on, say hi, let me know that you're here. That would be awesome. And while we're waiting for everyone to come on board, I will just find this live on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments. So let's go and find this live. If my iPad will cooperate. <laughs> Technology, gotta love it, hey. Okay, what is happening? Something is happening and I, there we go, okay. Good, good. All right, good. Found it. Awesome. So I can see all of your comments. Hi, Robin. How are you? Great to have you along today. Thanks for joining me. So we're just waiting for a few more people to jump on before we get underway. It is a beautiful day here today. I even have a summer top on today because um, I had to go out this morning and started off with a long sleeve um, top on and then came downstairs and thought oh no I'm going to be too hot so I um I got changed and um, yeah it was beautiful outside still wore my jacket but um, I haven't got my jacket on now <laughs> how are you today Robin what are you up what have you been up to today so this morning I went and um, did my usual Monday posting at the post office, um, did a bit of running around, went and visited um, one of our friends is building a house just nearby. So um, Amber and I, my daughter, uh, we went there and had a little look to see how it was all going and it's coming up really quickly. So it's fantastic. Hi, Tina. Great to see you. How are you? Great to have you along today. So those of you too who might be joining later, either on the replay um, there or on my uh, YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching. And um, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. And if you are watching, oh, and feel free to leave a comment too. And if you are watching on my YouTube channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. And then if you click on the little bell icon that you'll find on the right hand side underneath the video, then um, you'll be sure of being notified every time I post a new video. So you'll never miss out on anything. So Robin says, uh, she's not too bad. Oh, you made your challenge card today and some more sorting and tidying. Awesome. So Robin is part of my beautiful paper craft gems, my beautiful team. And um, every month we have a creative challenge. So our creative challenge um, for this month is to make an alternative kit project. So using one of our current kits or the Box of Sunshine kit and um, producing a project that is um, not from the instructions. So it's off plan of our own creation. So, um, so that's exciting, Robin. I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Very good. And what have you been up to, Tina? How have you been? Feels like forever since I've seen you. It's been such a long time. So, um, yeah, so feel free to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, leave me comments either on my YouTube or here if you're watching the replay of my live later on. Feel free to leave a comment there. And as you're jumping on, just say hi and let me know that you're here if you're joining me live. All right, so Father's Day. We had Father's Day here yesterday um, here in Australia. I'm not sure about overseas what days they have Father's Day. I think they might have it at a different time of year to us, um, especially in America. I think it's at a different time of the year, I think. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, if any of you are watching from America today. Um, so... Yeah, so how did everybody celebrate yesterday? And did all the dads have a lovely day? Oh, you used the sunshine, the box of sunshine kit. Lovely, Robin. That's awesome. That's okay. You can post it later on. No problem. I'll look forward to seeing it maybe this evening or tomorrow when you get time. So what did you all do for Father's Day? Did you have nice celebrations with your family? 
Did you make something special for the dads in your life, either for your husband or for your, um, your dad or maybe your stepdad or maybe your grandfather? So let me know about what you made. So I, we had, um, hey Athena, great to see you. Thanks for joining. We're just talking about um, Father's Day and how we celebrated Father's Day yesterday. So we had a lovely day, a lovely family day. Well, it was actually afternoon and evening. Um, the morning John was doing some things. The kids slept, um, they tend to sleep in on Sundays. So they didn't get up till uh, midday-ish. So he was doing his own thing. But then the afternoon we had a lovely time. We played a few games together. Um, we did some charades, we did some other games like that. So that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of laughs. Then we had a barbecue in the evening, which John cooked, but he wanted to do that. So um, he wanted a barbecue. I gave him the option of a barbecue or a baked dinner. So either he cooks or I cooks, but he chose a barbecue. So um, we did some baked veggies with that too. Um, so that was really fun and then we played some more games in the evening as well. So it was a really lovely family time in the afternoon and we've decided that we're going to have family day um, once a month because now the kids are older and they're adults and they've all got their own lives and they're going here, there and everywhere. We don't really spend a lot of time all together. Well, actually we don't. We don't spend much time at all, all together except for special birthdays and things like that. So I said to them, no, we really need to do this more often. So we're planning to do that each month now on a Sunday um, once a month. So that'll be really lovely just to spend time all together. I think that's important too, isn't it? To keep that connection with our families as well, especially at the moment with everything that's going on in the world. Um, so Robin says they went to her daughter's place and she made a card for her dad. That's awesome, Robin. That's so exciting. And she did a drawing and a colouring one. Oh, fantastic. That is very good. That's very exciting. That's so nice. Yeah, so Robin's daughter has a new house. And um, so that would have been lovely to have your very first special event at her home, her new home. Beautiful. What about everybody else? Would anybody else like to share what they did for Father's Day yesterday? Or perhaps what you created for Father's Day? So we had, um, so John's dad is in a nursing home. Um, so he isn't able to be visited at the moment because all the nursing homes here in Sydney are all in lockdown. So, um, and in Victoria as well. And I'm not sure about the other states. But anyway, so he still went to visit. Um, he actually went on Saturday because he had to take his mum to an appointment. Um, so he went to visit his dad, but can't visit him internally but was able to drop some gifts at the door and one of the staff came and got them and took them to him and um, I'd made a card for him and so he was able to take that to him and then he calls him on the phone and John's dad's room faces the street so John was actually able to stand out in the street at the window and talk to his dad on the phone he can't hear through the window so well because he's got hearing impairment John's dad not John well John might have a bit of hearing impairment too <laughs> You know, we're all getting older. Things start to break down. No, um, his, do his dad is hard of hearing. So he rang him on the phone and they chatted through the window. Um, yeah, on the phone. So so that was really good. He really liked his card. And Amber had made a card for John. Um, so in fact, it was the one that I cased that I made the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago using the triangles. Was it last week or the week before? I can't even remember now. I've lost track. But yeah, it was that one. So um, yeah, so that's the, the that was kind of a collaboration between the two of us. And um, so she had made one and then I made one on my live as well. So we each had made one. So he got one of those ones for Father's Day. So he thought he thought that was pretty cool. He thought that she had actually made it out of leather. He said the cardstock. Um, the triangles on the cards made out of the cardstock looked like leather because he's like, is that leather? And he's like feeling it. Um, and I said to him, no, it's just cardstock. It's just paper. <laughs> so there you go. You never know. Um, I'll tilt that down a little bit. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. And um, usually I make John's dad a little gift or a little um, gift box or something like that. But I didn't do that this time. But uh, was it last weekend or the weekend before? I sent him one of our special little 
um, boxes of sunshine. So we used the mini paper pumpkin boxes and made him a box of sunshine and sent that with a card and some yummies inside. So he already kind of got that a week early. Um, yeah. So that's what we did. We had a really, really lovely day. Um, so Saturday, so backtracking Saturday, um, we had our monthly team meeting with my precious paper craft gems. Um, I love my team. They're so beautiful. And our very newest team member actually joined us. She only joined um, our team a couple of days ago and she was able to come along to our first team meeting, oh, well, her first team meeting with us. So that was really lovely to have her along. Um, and this time we actually had it by Zoom. Normally I do um, just a Facebook Live for the team, but I really wanted to interact because we all miss each other so much. So I really wanted to see them all face to face. Um, and we had a really lovely time and it was fantastic and everybody really enjoyed that. And then afterwards we had some creative time together. So we all played with the box of sunshine together and um, all created a few cards. I think we, we did four cards together. So that was a lot of fun. So we're going to continue doing it that way. Um, yeah, so that was really, really fun. Um, and yeah, and so when, um, when you're on my team, there are lots and lots of fun things that I do. So we have a Facebook group um, where I share a lot of information, but we also share and collaborate. Well, not collaborate so much, but we inspire each other. For, uh, with our projects that we create. So we all post our product, our projects as we're making them on there to share with each other. We post tips and um, things like that for each other too, which is very helpful because sometimes people will come up with things and um, we'll think, oh, we've never thought of that before or you know, some of our, our team are newer to card making and so they're picking up a lot of tips from the others who have been doing it a bit longer. And even some of us that have been doing it for a long time are picking up tips as well. So it's a lot of fun. I run creative challenges every month, as I mentioned before when um, Leslie was talking, uh, sorry, Robin. Oh, I did it again, Robin. <laughs> I'm sorry, when Robin was talking about her um, creative challenge card that she's made today or over the weekend. Oh, hi, Tina Marie. I'm just talking about our beautiful team. It's great to have you along today. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I do creative challenges every month, which are a lot of fun. And um, everyone who enters in the creative challenge goes into a prize draw and so somebody each month wins a prize as a result of that which is a lot of fun and very exciting because you know they have something to look forward to. Uh, I also do team recognitions and I do gifts for my team um, for particular recognitions and particular achievements as well so uh, that's really lovely and um I also recognize their anniversaries or as we call them in the stamping world, their stamp anniversary. So when they've been with me um, each year, I send them out an anniversary card or a stamp anniversary card just to congratulate them. And uh, yeah, so that's really, really lovely. So there's lots of things we do together as a team. Um, and now we're meeting with via Zoom as well, which is fantastic. So we can see each other again. Um, your usually usual time, not COVID time, but usual time. We do meet in person as well. Some of my team come along to my classes and so we get to see each other as well. And um, yeah, we have a lot of time together. <laughs> Sorry, Robin. <laughs> oh dear. I've got two team members. I know who they are. I know them individually. They're very different people. They're both beautiful and lovely. And for some reason, I always get the two of their names mixed up whenever I talk to them. I'll call one the other and the other that one. I don't know why, because their names aren't even similar, but for some reason, I don't know, maybe you join, Maybe you both joined around the same time or something. I don't know why, I don't know why I do that, but it's pretty funny every time I do it. At least they, everyone laughs about it now, so that's good. <laughs> oh, I'm getting older, you know, I'm having those senior moments. <laughs> Uh, um, so at the moment, let me tell you, I've got lots of things to tell you about today. So talking about my team, if that sounds interesting, if that sounds really exciting to you or, um, something you'd like to be a part of, cause we have a beautiful community and, um, having, being part of that community that not only does 
does everyone get along really well and everybody's really lovely um, and helpful for each other and supportive of each other but we also have a wonderful community of um you know we're all crafty like like-minded crafters is what i'm trying to say so we all are so passionate about our crafting and so it's lovely to have a community to share that with um, and it's a really really special group so if that sounds interesting to you let me tell you about the get and go starter kit promotion so one way that you can join my team is to take um, advantage of this wonderful get and go promotion that's available at the moment so normally and um, and currently our starter kit to um to purchase is only $169 and you get to choose $235 worth of product in that starter kit and still only pay $169. So you're getting $66 worth of free product already, plus you get free shipping on top of that as well. So that's another added saving. But at the moment, from the 1st to the 30th of September, there is some added products in your starter kit as well. So you still get to choose your own products up to the value of $235. And then Stampin' Up! will give you two free stamp sets. Let me hold that a bit closer. Two free stamp sets. So it's the Queen Anne's Lace. And the other one I always forget and I can't read it because the, the writing is too small. Where is my, hang on, let me read it on here. So much love, that's the one. I always forget the name of it so much love stamp set plus you get a packet of um, bling so you'll get some basic pearls as well and then you get 16 card kits so there's two different kits there and you get eight of each of those and when you join there's actually also some tutorials of how to use those card kits if you would like to use them with the samples that Stampin' Up! has designed um, for those card kits or you can use them and make up your own um, design as well that is totally fine but everything is pre-cut in those kits which is awesome now you can either use those kits for yourself and for your own purposes you might like to share them with your friends or family you might like to make those cards up and send them out to people or give them to people or if you're interested in a business opportunity, you might like to hold a party or a workshop and actually use those to get started. Now, when you join my team, you don't have to sell. If you don't want to sell and you just want to take the advantage of the this wonderful offer and then ongoing from there, you'll get 20% discount on all your purchases. So who doesn't love a bargain? It's like um, a Costco subscription. I have heard some demonstrators use that analogy, like a Costco subscription. So you, you pay to join Costco and then you reap the rewards because you get discounts. It's kind of the same thing. You pay to join Stampin' Up! and then you get 20% discount on all your products, plus all these freebies I just talked about. So that is the offer at the moment. Now, if you would like more information about that or about my team, please feel free to get in contact with me. I'd love to have a chat with you about that. So um, as I was saying, there is no pressure to uh, sell at all. If you want to just join my team just to get that offer, that is totally fine if that's all you would like. But if you would like to stick around for a little while and use that 20% discount to then purchase all of the products that you would like, um, then feel free to do that as well. So Stampin' Up! doesn't pressure you to sell. I don't pressure you to sell. It's totally up to you what you do once you join. Now, there's no lock-in contracts either. So if after being around for a little while, you've purchased all the products that you want to and you think, no, I don't want to do this anymore, or perhaps you think, no, I can't afford this or whatever, if your circumstances change, you simply just stop ordering as a demonstrator and you go back to being my customer. It's that easy. You don't need to resign. You don't need to do anything else. Um, that's it. You just purely stop ordering and then you just go back to being a customer. It's really easy. Now, if you have any other questions about that, please let me know. Um, there is so much more that I can tell you, but that's, that's the package deal in a nutshell. And it's really awesome. Um, and especially when we have specials like this with these additional products, um, then yeah, it, it's fantastic. Now this offer doesn't come with inks 
and it doesn't come with your stamp blocks, your clear stamp blocks. So if you are not already a card maker or a crafter and you don't already have inks and blocks, you might like to put those into your starter kit as well. But the other thing is too, remember I told you um, recently, well, I've been talking about it for a while, we do have our brand new large stamp and cut and emboss machine. The mini is not available just yet, but that'll be available a little bit later. But we have the large stamp and cut and emboss machine available at the moment. Now that is normally $209 to buy outright, okay? So you can either pay $209 to purchase it outright, and I'm happy I'm happy for you to do that and I'm happy to take the commissions, but rather you could keep the commissions for yourself, put it in your starter kit and only pay $169. And then you'd have another $26 still to purchase other things in your starter kit. Plus, then you would get all of these freebies as well and you get free postage on all of that. So I think, I, I can't remember the total. I did add it all up at one stage, and I can't even remember now what the saving was. It was something huge. It was like 70, between 70 and a hundred dollars or something like that. Actually, it would be more than that now because now we've got the, that was before this promotion. So with this promotion, usually I'm not even sure of the value of these stamp sets. I should look that up actually. But um, by the time you get the value of the stamp sets and the embellishments and then all the card stop kits, like that's a huge saving. So anyway, I'll leave that with you to have a think about. Let me know if you need any more information about that, but it's really, really exciting promotion. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to let you know about was my special personal promotion for that I have been running for August and September. So I have been aiming for the Maui incentive trip for demonstrators. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to get there, but I'm going to try my hardest to get as close as I can. And if you would love to help me, that would be awesome. If you would love to um, shop with me, that would be a huge help. If you'd like to join my team, that would also be a huge help. Um, but if you um, are not if you're not ready to, to join my team, that's totally fine. But if you would like to order, I have got a special promotion at the moment. So for all um, orders between August and September, and I'm reading my notes just to be sure that I tell you the right thing because I keep forgetting which bits go with which. Um, too much in my head. <laughs> So, uh, yes, when you shop with me during, um, well, August is gone with the rest of September and you use my host code, which I will share with you shortly, you'll go into the draw. Um, when your orders are over $50, you'll go into, oh, sorry, for all purchases, you'll go into the draw to win either the Birds and Branches bundle. So that's a stamp set and um, die bundle and that is valued at $81. And the second prize is the greenery embossing folder. Okay, and that one is valued at $14. That's the second prize. So you will not only go in the draw to win that, but if your order is over $50, remember you need to use that host code to be in the, in the um, draw for these, then you will also receive free my Autumn Fall Mega Tutorial Bundle. Now that Mega Tutorial Bundle I do have for sale. You can purchase it separately. It's $35 or if you spend over $50, you'll get it for free. And in that tutorial bundle is 82 tutorials from demonstrators all over the world. We've all collaborated together and um, you will get that for free. Um, and they are all autumn themed or fall if you're in America, autumn, fall. Um, yeah, so they were really beautiful. There's so many ideas in there. It'll, if you, you know, if you want some creative inspiration, it's, awesome to to grab a bundle like that as well you will also get a pack of pearl basic jewels from me as well so all of those things um, when you use my host code here's my september host code this is my september host code okay jj 2 j p r p b did i say that the right way around yes because i'm reading it back to front <laughs> So that is my September host code. So if you shop with me and use that host code, you'll go into the draw. Over $50, you'll go into the draw, plus get the free mega tutorial bundle, plus get a packet of Pearl Basic Jewels from me. 
okay? So that is my special that I am running um, at the moment. Okay, so the next information I wanted to let you know was that the clearance rack has updated as well. So another great reason to shop. Jump onto my online store, check out the clearance rack. Um, there's lots of beautiful products there in the clearance rack at huge discounts as well. So jump on there and have a look at the clearance rack. Um, you'll find the clearance rack over on the, let me get the right side, over when you go into the online store, over on the left hand, hand left, 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 left hand side, there'll be a drop down menu, okay? So in that drop down menu, you'll type, you'll be able to find the clearance rack or you can type it in the search bar as well. You'll see a little um, microscope, uh, not microscope, what do you call it? Magnifying glass, where you can type in to search for something. You just type in clearance rack and that'll pop up for you, okay? Alrighty. Ah, oh, the other thing, there's so much news today. It's really exciting. I get so excited when there's so much news to tell you. Another really cool thing that is coming up, which I had kind of forgotten about, uh, but I just noticed when I was checking all the updates today, but World Card Making Day is coming up very soon. It's going to be on the 3rd of October. Okay, so be sure to put that in your calendar that the 3rd of October is World Card Making Day. Here in Australia, that's, well, here in, oh, I'm not sure if it's all of Australia or just New South Wales, it's our long weekend, it's the Saturday. Now I'm actually having a team meeting that day um, in the afternoon, but I am planning on doing, hopefully, something in the evening, which will be open to everybody um, and probably via Zoom. So I'm still working out the final details about that, but look out for that event in my event section on here on my business page because I am planning something special for everyone to join us, which will be a lot of fun. So um, yeah, so we'll celebrate World Card Making Day. I think in the future, in the past, I haven't been able to celebrate it because I've usually been away, but I won't be away, away this time. I'll be here. So that'll be really cool. That'll be exciting. All right, um, now the Box of Sunshine is still available. Surprisingly, I thought it would have been all sold out by now. We still have our beautiful Box of Sunshine Paper Pumpkin Kit available. It's only $37. Um, you can find that as well in my online store. So if you haven't already taken the opportunity to grab one of those, grab one of those or grab a couple. I sent out a couple today, a couple more. I've been sending them out over the last few weeks. And I sent out some card packs with, with some of the cards already ready made for some of my relatives that aren't card makers. I sent a box of um, beautiful sunshine goodies to some other family members. And I just love sending those things out to spread sunshine to my loved ones. So if you haven't already jumped on board with that one, check that out as well. You can also find that in my online store. And it's only $37, so it's very affordable. And they make a great gift as well. Um, I received a message from my cousin today. And um, I had sent a kit down to her for her and her girls. And she said that they were loving it. So I was so glad to hear that. It really made my day that I had made their day um, with that box of sunshine. They're really enjoying putting together those cards so yeah, that's really awesome. Love, love um, spreading that sunshine into other people's lives. Alrighty, so that I think is all of my news, which um, I have been talking for like, what is that saying? 26 minutes already. So it took me 26 minutes to give you all of my news. <laughs> now, who is ready for some creative time? We are gonna be playing, well actually, one thing I didn't tell you, let me just move my folder here. One thing I didn't mention was our catalogs. So I should mention those because they are the most important thing. All right, so we have two catalogs. Now these are my working catalogs. So these have got all of my tabs, my sticky tabs everywhere. We have got our beautiful annual catalog, which is, sorry, I'm trying to tip it away from the light so that the light doesn't reflect on the cover because the cover is glossy. Um, now when you get your catalog, it won't be spiral bound like that. It'll just have an ordinary like a magazine type binding. Um, I always take mine to Officeworks, which is our local stationers here, and um, I get mine spiral bound each year. And I also get a clear plastic cover put on the front and the back, which I've, I've got flipped over at the moment to try and alleviate a little bit of that reflection. Then I go through and I add all my tabs 
So I've got tabs at the top and tabs down the side so that I can find things. And then I've got additional tabs with other ideas and things I need to find in a hurry and things like that. So that's our annual catalogue. Then we've currently got our August to December mini catalogue. And um, this one is what we're going to be playing with today. Some of the products out of here. And we're going to be making a Christian, a Christian, a Christmas card today. So um, you can see I've already got my tab here because that's the page we're going to be referring to. So I made sure to be able to find it today because a couple of times I haven't tabbed it. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, where is that page again? <laughs> So we're going to be doing that. We also have a beginner brochure as well, which I didn't grab off my shelf. Um, so we have the three catalogues running at the moment. So if you already don't, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you're here in Australia, please let me know because I would love to send a copy of these catalogues out to you if you don't already have them. Um, and if you don't have a demonstrator, I would love to be able to help you. So please let me know. Um, ask me any questions that you might have, um, if you need any help with product, or if you're new to stamping and you're not sure where to start, I can help you with that. So yeah, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you. Okay, so what I will do is I will um, turn my camera down to the desktop and we'll get started on our creative time and I will show you what we're going to be playing with. It's super beautiful. Um, now, I'm going to cover up the camera while I do that just so I don't make you all dizzy because I have to set up the camera and the lights and it's a little bit clunky. So I cover up the camera so I don't make you all dizzy. And, um, oh yes, I just saw your comment there, Teen Marie. Card making, World Card Making Day. Yes, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yes, I'm just working on what we're going to be doing for that. So I've got a couple of weeks, I've got a few weeks, no, a couple of weeks left to work that out. So, but I will, I'll work it out soon so I can post up the event. All right, let me cover up the camera and I'll get everything ready. Just bear with me for a moment. Okay, let's flip those cameras and we'll move everything. <clears throat> Okay, just get you all in a little bit closer and we'll see how we are looking. Tighten up all my clamps and get some light down on the desk. Alrighty, let's see now. How are we looking today? It always takes me a little bit of tweaking. Okay. So we need to go over this way. Actually, I might move the camera that away. If I can, my stand is very heavy. Let me just, I'll just take my catalogue off there for a moment while I get this all lined up so that I can see where we are. Straighten that up a little bit. Okay. So, oh, I think we're a little bit close, actually. Let me just raise that up. Sorry, it might just might just wiggle a little bit while I just move that up a tad. I think we're, whoops, I think we're a little bit close. There we go. You want to be able to see, but you want to be able to see everything, not just a tiny little bit of something. Alrighty, there we go. So, um... How are we looking now? We're still a little bit wonky. So we'll just move all of this over. I'm just watching what's at the side of my desk so I don't lose the lot. <laughs> we certainly don't want that. Okay. So I'll, talk, I'll keep talking while I'm getting everything straightened up. Okay, so you'll see here, this is my brand, Mandy's Paper Craft Creations. Um, and I need to start introducing myself with that again too. I, I've been a little bit slack with that lately. Um, but yes, my brand is Mandy's Papercraft Creations. My blog is Mandy's Papercraft Creations.blogspot.com, and that is where you can find my online store. So if you go to my blog, up on the top left hand side, you'll see a shop tab. So you just click on that shop tab, and that'll take you straight to my online store. Next to my shop tab is also my joining tab. So if you click on that joining tab or, or button, then that will take you straight through to the joining um, page 
page as well if you would like to have a little look there. Um, so feel free to do that. I've also got tutorials there as well and some other information on the other tabs you'll see there on my blog. So please go there. Also too, you can subscribe to my newsletter there as well so that you'll always get um, monthly updates of what's happening with Stampin' Up! and what's happening um, with my classes and all sorts of things that I have for my customers there. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Tina Marie. Um, no worries, Rose. I'm glad that you have joined us. Not a problem. Um, you might like to go back after we finished, Rose, you might like to go back and watch the beginning um, news section because I had lots of exciting things to share with everybody today. All right, so when you are shopping with me, again, this is my host code as I showed you earlier. Um, this is my host code for September and each month there's a new host code. Okay, so this is my September host code. So when you're shopping with me, if you use that host code, then I will be able to send you a thank you. And for every um, order over $50, you will receive a thank you gift as well as a handmade card. Okay, so we are playing with the August to December mini catalogue. Now let's have a look at what we're playing with from this catalogue today. We are going to be playing with the Poinsettia Suite Place. Po sorry, Poinsettia Place Suite. I said that round the wrong way. Poinsettia Place Suite. It is really, really beautiful. Now I've got some stories about poinsettias, which I'll talk to you about as I'm um, creating these cards. So here are our beautiful products. So we have um, the beautiful designer series paper. We've got a stamp set and die bundle. We've got the um, plush poinsettia specialty paper, which is um, flocked. We're going to be using some of that today, so I can show you that up close. And it is so beautiful. Um, really, really pretty. We've got our beaded pearls and then there's some real red sheer ribbon. Now, if you like all of those products and you want to get all of those products, um, you can put in just one code, which you'll find over here. So the one code for the entire suite is over here. It's 155109. But if you want to purchase these products individually, you can as well. Now just keep in mind as well, when you are purchasing the stamp set and the dies, you can purchase them individually, but it's always a great idea to purchase them together. If you think down the track, you might want the dies or you might purchase the dies and, and not be sure about the stamp set. And then down the track, you realize, oh, I really want the stamp set. Get them both together because when you get them both together, you're actually saving 10%. So it's a pretty good saving when you purchase them both together. And a number of times I have made the mistake of only getting one without the other and then really realizing down the track that I do need the other. And then I've missed out on that 10% and actually paid, you know, full price. So just remember that. All right, and then over the page, it actually shows you, oops, not that page, went too far. Over the page, it gives you a bigger view of the stamp set as well, and that's shown at 100% there. All right, so that's the Poinsettia um, Petals stamp set. So we've got some beautiful Christmas greetings in there as well, and these beautiful imagery. Now, this is a two-step stamping stamp set, so you have the outlines of the stamps, and then you also have these solid shapes, which actually you can use to color the inside. So you can either use the stamps to do the coloration on your um, stamped images, or you might like to just stamp the outlines and then use your favorite color medium, whether or not that is um, water coloring or stamp and write markers or um, stamp and blends or whatever is your favorite color medium. Um, then yeah, you've got that option there. And then over here, it shows you the die set as well. Um, and then up here, it's got the, the code for the bundle. Okay, and there's, a, and there's a few more samples there of some cards as well. And it tells you about the 10% there too. Okay, so that is what we're going to be playing with today. Really, really gorgeous. Now I have everything in the suite except the um, Real Red Sheer Ribbon. I didn't buy that one because I have some other red ribbons, which we're actually not using ribbon today anyway. Um, but it is a really pretty ribbon, as you can see in the catalogue. It's that beautiful sheer um, uh, ribbon. And um, yeah, that's in the Real Red colour. 
Okay, so let me show you the products. So we've got, there's the stamp set, and on the cover of the stamp set, you'll notice that these images look a lot smaller. Because if I show you the stamp, so this is the this is the large one here, but if I show you the actual stamp, you can see that it is a lot bigger. Because there's so many stamps in this stamp set, there's 18 stamps and they couldn't fit all of them on the cover. So they're actually shown on the cover at 65%. Okay, and it tells you down here that it's shown at 65%. Let me hold that up. It's shown at 65% and it tells you that it's a two-step stamp set. Okay, so that is that it has the outline and then it's got the color for um, in the centers. Okay, so you've got that for the poinsettias and for the leaves as well. All right, and now with our dies, now we were having trouble putting this back onto the um, paper that it came on. So this is the, um, the poinsettia dies. So the reason that we were having trouble putting them back on there is trying to work out where we'd taken them off from. <laughs> so trying to line them back up. But I'll probably put this onto magnetic sheets anyway. But with the dies, you'll notice you've got the outline here. Let me pop that down. So you've got the outline here that um, will die cut the stamp. So you can see that's the same size. Or if you just want to die cut, die cut cardstock, you can just die cut the cardstock with the die. And then you've got these embossing pieces that you can then put in the center and run through your die cutting machine. And it will actually emboss the veins in the leaves or in the petals and it does the same with the leaves as well so that is really cool so that's like a almost like a two-step die set I guess that's what you would call it um, but yeah I'm just trying to I have to work out how they go back on the um on the sheet later on but yeah so we're going to be using that we've got some gorgeous berries um, some of the dies coordinate with the dies the stamped images sorry here but then you've also got additional dies as well on here, which is awesome. And there's so many of them. Actually, how many dies are there? Let me have a look on the sheet here. There are 18 dies. So there's 18 stamps and 18 dies. So there you go. So yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, dies there. Oops. All right. These I wanted to show you up close. These are the beaded pearls that are part of the suite. They are absolutely gorgeous. So you've got the three little pearls that are um, sort of all together on. I'll show you the back. See, they're on a little plate like that. Let me hold that up that way a bit. So they're on a little plate like that. And you've got the three little pearls with the little um, silver beads in between. Aren't they gorgeous? So, so pretty. So we're going to be using some of those. And then the designer series paper. So my it comes in. Oops, it comes in twelve by twelve sheets, but I've got mine um, cut into um, six by twelve at the moment because this was part of my paper share. Uh, but you'll see all these beautiful designs on these papers, and of course they're all double sided. So I'll show you the other side. And this one we're using today, so this one's been chopped down even more. But they do come in the um, the paper pack as 12 by 12. All right, and then we'll flip that over. And then that is the opposite side. Aren't they just so beautiful? And some of these are even, um, you know, you could use them for other things other than Christmas. Like these ones on this side, they're not really necessarily Christmassy. You could use them for other occasions. So aren't they beautiful? And the wood one, the wood grain, of course, you can use for anything and even the pine cones. So aren't they just so beautiful? And then the flocked specialty. Let me have a look. I'll get some of this out for you. So there's three different designs in here and you get a total of six sheets. So you get... Yes, thank you for reminding me, Tina Marie. The um, dies actually cut the flocked paper and the dies fit around the poinsettias on the flocked paper. So you can see it's, so this is vellum and then the flocking of the images is on the vellum and it's, it's really fluffy. 
and like it's like a matte fluff like it's not fluffy like it's coming off it's not coming off or anything like that but you can feel it furry it's really really beautiful so you've got the poinsettias you've got this one which we're using today which is a beautiful design this one's got a bit of this one's actually got a little bit of added fluff on it this one the other one didn't have that one does though and then the leaves as well so the dyes will also cut these images on here as well aren't they just so beautiful really really pretty okay so that is all of that so let's get to our project i think i've shown you everything yep oops well i've got <laughs> i've got my stamps on the blocks already sitting beside me and i just put the paper pack down on top of them and they all decided to stick all right there we go okay now i have a project for you oh well actually first of all before we start i just wanted to show you so this is one of the the dies that i was telling you about i'm not sure how you'll see it on camera so this is the largest poinsettia die so it's this one here Whoop. hang on a minute all fingers and thumbs so it's this large one here with the embossed piece as well okay and then you get can you see those indents or the embossed veins in the the petals there not sure how the you get the light over that now this one i haven't spritzed first so one of our team members was playing yesterday was it yesterday or day before? And she showed us that if you actually, excuse my dry hands, it's all the washing and sanitizing. <laughs> um, if you spritz the cardstock first and then do the embossing, you get a much deeper embossing. So this one hasn't been spritzed, spritzed and it's much lighter. Um, but yeah, when you do spritz, you get a deeper, more beautiful um, embossed. I mean, you can use it just like that and it's still beautiful but you get an even uh, better impression when you spritz it first with a little bit of water. And um, we do sell the spritzers, and I had one, here we go. So we do sell the water spritzers. They're just a little, um, it's just got a little chamber. The top comes out, you just fill that with water, and then it's just got the little pump at the top, um, and they, they come in a pack. So you can find those in the annual catalogue and they come in a pack of um, two. I'm pretty sure it's in a pack of two. Um, and I just put a label on mine because I have a water one and I also have one that has isocol alcohol in it that I use for um, other um, colouring uh, techniques and things. So yeah, so they're always really handy to have on hand. So yeah, so I just wanted to show you those ones, but um, I was going to use those ones and then I decided that I wanted to use the stamped images. So I will show you what it looks like with the stamps. Okay, so that's the ordinary one with the embossing. And then this is with using the stamp and just the outline die, not using the embossing die. Can you see the difference? I really loved this. And I've just stamped tone on tone. So it's just real red on real red. And um, you get that beautiful detail. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so let's get started. I just wanted to show you all of that. So there's lots of different things you can do with this one. All right, so the colors we're going to be using today are Old Olive, Garden Green and Real Red. Um, the old olive is just for our sentiment. Uh, the garden green and the real red are the main colours that we're going to be using in the cardstock um, and the ink. All right, so the first thing I just wanted to show you was the um, stamping of the flowers. So we'll just stamp the flowers first. Oh, you like the pine cones, Tina Marie? Yeah, they're really beautiful too. All right, so we're just going to... Um, ink up our poinsettia our large poinsettia with our real red ink and we're going to stamp that onto real red cardstock now i'm going to put it up here in the corner 
so that I'm not using, I'm not wasting too much cardstock. Now I don't have my foam mat underneath me, but if you wanted um, to be sure of a, a really great impression, then you can use one of our stamp and pierce mats. Here they are here. Now the stamp and pierce mat isn't in the annual catalog at the moment. However, it is available. So if you just go to my online store and just type in stamp and pierce mat, it'll come up if you don't already have one of those. All right, so we just um, stamp that onto the real red so you can see that image there. And then we're going to run that through with our die. So it's just a matter of, let me move that out of the way. It's just a matter of lining up, working out which way. Oh, look, I did it first time. Working out which way your uh, die fits onto the image and then run that through your die cutting machine. Okay. And here's the one I prepared earlier, <laughs> just to save a little bit of time. I've already done that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to stamp all of our poinsettias. So I've, I've done the large one. Then we've got the medium one. So we'll pop that one over here. And then we've got our smallest one. So really quick and easy to stamp these. And just trying to work out where to put them on the cardstock to utilize the best amount of cardstock. And I don't think I've lined, I don't think I've done that terribly well because I'm going to have to put this one smack bang in the middle. There we go. Okay, so we're just stamping our three beautiful poinsettias and then we've finished now with that real red. All right, now I'm going to clean these straight away and let me bring in my scrap paper. So I'm going to just stamp these off first onto some scrap paper just to get rid of any excess ink that is on there. Um, so that I get less ink in my um, chamois, my stamp and chamois. Now the reds will stain your um, stamps. Any of the reds and the bright pinks, they will stain your, your photopolymer stamps, but don't be worried about that. Um, it doesn't affect how your stamps will work. They'll still work really well. But after giving them a clean, just stamp them off onto some scrap paper and make sure you've got all that excess ink off there. Okay. And you can see my chamois is well loved. It has been used and used. I did just buy a brand new one actually, but um, I haven't opened it yet. Now I've got a little bit of excess ink just on the block there. I over inked that a little. There we go. I'll just take that off. Give that a clean. Oops, still got a bit of ink on it, so we'll turn that over. And with my chamois, I just give it a rinse out under running water, clean running water once a week. Or if I'm doing like a lot of stamping and it gets, um, you know, like a lot of heavy inking, then I'll, I might do it a bit more regularly. But usually I just do it once a week. Okay, that's nice and clean now. But you can see, oh, actually there's a little bit in there that I didn't get. There we go, I've got it now. But you can see if I show you through the block, that um, that stamp is now looking pink because that red ink has um, absorbed into the photopolymer and that happens. So, But don't be too worried about it. It doesn't affect how your stamp works and that color will not come out into um, your other um, colors. So don't be too worried. All right, just make sure you give it a really, really good clean um, to be sure that it's you know absolutely got all of that ink out. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is to stamp some leaves onto some um, garden green using garden green ink. So let me just, um, and so once you've stamped these, then you can die cut them or it's a good idea to do all your stamping first, then do all your die cutting just to save yourself a little bit of time. Um, now let me get... Okay, so I've just got some garden green here. In fact, let me see. I might be able to even fit them on the scrap. I probably won't fit them on the scrap, actually. 
Um, I think you might like to stamp an extra small poinsettia too. Um, oh, did I not stamp enough? Oh, that's correct. Thank you, Amber. Sorry, you supposed um, you need two of the small poinsettias for this project. Sorry, I only stamped one, but you need two. So, um, yeah, so the big one, the medium one, and then two of the small ones. Thank you, Amber. I missed that little guy. Oh, you like the pink stain. Yeah, it makes it easier for you to see. Yeah, it does, actually. Oh, and your new carpet's in, Judy. Awesome. That is so exciting. Wow. New, new paintwork and new carpet. You won't know yourself. All right, so this time we're doing Garden Green on Garden Green. And we are going to be stamping, let me see how many do I need. Um, one, two, three large ones and two small. So I'm just going to go, oh, I meant to stamp off. Okay, so when you stamp it first generation, it is really, really dark. And I'll just show you the difference. I'll just move that off to the side for a moment. I'll just show you the difference. So when you stamp the real red onto real red, it's a lot, let me go this way, it's a lot fainter. But when you stamp the garden green onto garden green, it's a lot stronger in colour for first generation. So what we did was we inked up our stamp, then stamped off first onto scrap paper and then stamped onto the cardstock okay so then you get that lighter leaf which goes much better with the um the coloration of the poinsettias all right so we're just going to stamp a few of those just move that one aside two three there we go and we'll do the same with the small one so Sorry, you can't see me inking, inking, stamping off onto some scrap. Let's go down here so we save our cardstock. One, two. And when you're stamping off, all you need to do is just ink and then just very briefly stamp off. So don't hold your stamp there. Actually, I didn't do that well. Let me do that again because the paper was folded. Let me unfold that a little bit. So ink. Then just quickly stamp off because if you hold the stamp there too long, that ink will absorb into the cardstock from the ink. But we don't want too much of it to um, come off. We just want the surface, um, like what's sitting on the surface, to just come off um, so that we get that nice image. Okay, so then we need um, three of the large ones and two of the small ones. Okay, so then that is done. All right. So that's really quick and easy to stamp all of those images. And I've got ink on myself, so I'll use my chamois to take that off. So do not certainly do not want to get that on our card. All right, now, while we are stamping, let's do our sentiment label. So I have got here a strip that is two centimeters wide of um, old olive and we are going to be using the banners pick a punch so the banners pick a punch is also from the august to december mini catalog um, and you have got two different bannered ends here so you've got like a point like an arrow end and then you've got the banner end as well we're going to use the pointed end today uh, and then the bannered end, but there's also three different sizes. So depending on the size of the cardstock strip that you cut as to, um, you know, the width that you need for your sentiment, then you've actually, in effect, got six punches here in one. So this is an awesome, awesome punch. We've got another one as well um, in, our, in our annual, is it the annual catalogue? Yeah, it was from the annual catalogue which is this one. So we've got two of the same sort, but they've got different um, bannered ends on them. This one's more of a fancy one. It's a bit hard to see on camera with all the lights and everything, but this one is more of a, a fancy one. Let's see if I can get the light right. And this one is your bannered ends. Okay, but this is the one we're using today. All right, so we're going to 
push our button, our locking button, to open our punch. Okay, and then we're going to slip our two centimetre um, piece of cardstock in there. Now, I like to turn my punch upside down because this two centimetre piece is not an exact fit for any one of these um, slots. This is a bit of an odd sized um, piece that we're using just to fit our, that's because we wanted to fit it on our sentiment. So I'm just lining that up. So I'm looking to where I'm lining that up. And I've got that piece pushed right up to the end of the, um, the punch there where it's straight at the edge. So I can line that up and then just punch. And there we go. There we have our bannered end. Okay, all right, so I'll pop these over there to be die cut. So we've got all our die cutting over there. Now with the sentiment, we are going to be stamping that in Versamark ink. Let me just grab my Versamark ink. And we're going to be using white embossing powder. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to plug in my my heat tool there we go because I had my devices plugged in so I'll just plug in my heat tool and I have my paper here to catch my embossing powder this is how I catch my embossing powder nothing fancy just a couple of sheets of um, photocopy paper just folded in half and I've got two sheets there so I've got plenty to catch um, all that embossing powder now, the sentiment that I'm using is Happy Holidays, and you probably can't see it there, but let me show you on the stamp set. So it is this one here. Now, remember, these are only shown at 65%, so it's a lot um, bigger um, in real life. Oh, Versamark ink, Tina Marie, that's the clear ink that we use when we are um, embossing. So if you're embossing in white embossing powder or gold or silver, um, then we use the Versamark ink pad. Now also too, you can emboss in colour if you use something like a Stamparatus or a stamp positioning tool. You can stamp first in your colour, then clean your stamp and then stamp over the top again in Versamark and then emboss in clear and then that will give you the colour coming through. One day I should do a demonstration on that actually to show people how to do that. Um, but yeah, so this is, um, you, I'll show you how it works. Okay, so we are going to be, it's also great, Versamark ink is also great for creating watercolour background, uh, sorry, um, watermark backgrounds. Say watercolour, not watercolour, watermark backgrounds. So it's a clear ink and it's quite sticky. So with our Happy Holidays, we're going to be stamping it towards the tip. Um, so we're going to be stamping it about there. Let's see if I got it straight. Oh, not too bad, actually. Now, it's fairly sticky, so it stays wet a lot longer than a lot of other inks, but you don't want to let it sit too long because you don't want it to dry. Oh, hi, Amanda. Great to see you. Um, and you'll watch the replay that you missed as well. Okay, fantastic. All right, and then we put our embossing powder on there. I'm going to tip off the excess and I'll give that a tap with my, this is my, just my paper, my paintbrush that I use for my embossing powder. And there we have our sentiment on our label. Okay, now before I do anything else, I'll set that aside and I'm going to put this back into the container. Now the reason I use two pieces is this is my funnel, this is my catcher. So if I miss the container, I've got another piece of paper there that's going to catch any that I miss going into the container. That is why I use two pieces. All right, and then we'll just cap that, pop that to the side, and now we will heat this with the heat tool. So let me just heat this up for a moment. Ah, so our normal classic stampin' pads, yes, they are a dye-based ink, Tina Marie, so they will not emboss. They are a quick drying ink, so they actually do not work with embossing. So you need to use either Versamark ink, or um, if you want to emboss, or a pigment-based ink. Okay, so then we just heat that embossing powder until it melts and becomes shiny. 
and that's as quick as that is that is done and then we'll just let that cool for a moment and we're going to trim the end off there but I might trim that off um, at the end because I want to make sure of the the um, size of it once we put that together and we're going to ink around the edges as well with our old olive okay so let's start putting all of this together now the other thing is too so here are my ones I prepared I prepared earlier so I've already die cut them just to save a bit of time um, while we're filming so there's my poinsettias already cut here are my leaves one two three and there's my two small ones okay so there's everything already cut ready to go ready to put together i also cut some of these little berries from some silver foil cardstock so we've got three of those aren't they gorgeous so so pretty and that's from the same die set as well which is I'm just finding it which one it is so I can show you that is this one here so that's what um, die cut these little berries okay um, okay now I'll give you so there are all of our die cut pieces so we've got them all ready to go now I'll give you all the dimensions of all of the cardstock for this project. So I gave you the um, the old olive already, so that's two centimeters. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it, Amanda? This stamp and die set, so gorgeous. All right, we're also going to need. Um, two of the little sets of pearls as well um, the beaded pearls all right so we have got a base of real red so your real red is just um, half a piece of a4 cardstock so it's 21 centimeters by 14.85 scored and folded at 10.5 centimeters to give you your base remember always to burnish your folded edge just to make that card sit down nicely and that'll give you a lovely fold okay then we have a piece of the designer series paper so this is the poinsettia place designer series paper that I showed you before see it's got the berries on one side and we're going to be using the wood side today this is measured at 10.1 by 14.45 centimeters and then we've got a piece of that gorgeous um, plush designer a plush poinsettia specialty paper and this measures at 8.7 centimeters by 13.05 down this way okay all right so we've got all of our elements and this one was this piece was just a two and a half centimeter strip so I've just cut that a little bit longer than what I need for the sentiment so I can just cut that down to size um, later on and of course you'll need some um, silver foil cardstock enough to to cut three of those berries and you'll need some real red and some garden green for stamping and die cutting your um, images okay so we are ready to put all of this together so let me just pop this over to the side all right so the first thing we are going to do is we're just going to adhere our designer series paper to our card front our card base <clears throat> excuse me I'm getting a little frog in my throat <clears throat> I'm going to be using some of our stamp and seal which is our new adhesive you can use um, whichever adhesive you prefer we have a lot of different adhesives to choose from we've got um, tear and tape we've got stamp and seal we've got our um, Tombow well it's called multi-purpose liquid glue otherwise known as Tombow so there are lots, lots of adhesives to choose from. Okay, this one is really sticky, as you can see, sticking to my fingers there. And I'm just going to pop that down. 
just using my grid paper to line this up that helps me to get everything straight now it doesn't matter up which way this paper goes um, this wood paper it can go either way there we go so we've got that nice border there now with your vellum we're going to adhere that next with the with the um plush poinsettia specialty paper because it is vellum it is opaque so you will see the adhesive through it so you have to be quite strategic where you place your adhesive that's going to be covered up by the other elements so it's going to go here in the middle now i know i'm going to be putting a sentiment up here and my main focal images are going to be down here so i'm going to put a whole heap of adhesive down here and a strip up here now when I flip that over obviously it's going to be on the opposite side so I have to make sure that I remember which side I'm putting that on and in fact because this is vellum I'm actually going to use my stamp and seal plus which is a bit stronger it's quite a bit stronger actually let's see if it'll go on to here because it's quite a slippery surface yep there we go okay um, yeah, the stamp and seal plus is stronger than the stamp and seal. Now let me see it was across that way. All right. So I'm going to put some adhesive down here and in the middle. Oh, it's actually quite slippery, this vellum on the back side of it. There we go. Okay, so that should be enough now to hold that in place you can use tear and tape you can use liquid glue whichever adhesive you use just be sure that it's going to be hidden by your elements that you're placing on top okay because otherwise that um, that adhesive will show through and this one is a really really strong adhesive and I actually just dropped this and I've dropped it in the wrong spot ah! I'll see if I can gently get that back up. It was just a little bit crooked. It adhered down before I was ready. <laughs> there we go. Oh, phew. okay. Let's try that again. Didn't quite have it lined up where I wanted it. There we go. Alrighty. All right. And give that a nice firm press down. And get that to hold in place okay so you'll notice some parts are loose um, that's okay because it's being held down on the other parts now if you want to once you get all your other elements on top if there are other sections where you can see you can sneak a little bit of adhesive in you can certainly do that but if you're going to sneak additional adhesive in you'd want to use either your um, multi-purpose liquid glue or perhaps a bit of tear and tape under there because of course with the tape runner you can't slip that under there easily even a glue dot glue dots are great too to slip in under things as well okay but that should be right that should be okay to go with now all right let's bring in all of our other elements now I'm going to put together my flowers first before I adhere them onto my cardstock and I would like to shape them a little bit first so I'm going to bring back in my bone folder and to shape them, I want them to shape so that the petals curl upwards. So I'm going to turn them upside down. So the ink, the um, stamped image is upside down. I'm using my bone folder and my thumb and just running that along very gently because I don't want to tear those um, petals of that poinsettia. And we're just gently curling those like that okay so now you can see there's a little bit of dimension to that flower all right we'll do that on all of them there we go and we'll do the big ones as well when you're working with the the um dies if you're working with the um, if you're doing the other type that I showed you that has the, um, I'll just tell you while I remember, um, that has the embossing on the inside, when you're using these dies, just be really careful with these because where they join to the center part, it's quite thin there. So just handle them really gently so that you don't um, bend and snap them, okay? So just be really gentle with these ones. I just remembered I didn't tell you that before. 
I've not had it happen, but I have heard of somebody being a little bit too rough with it. And um, yeah, they were a bit sad. So just be really gentle with that one. All right, so there we go. And let's do the same with our leaves. We'll just curl our leaves up a little bit. If you like them flat, you can leave them flat. You don't have to curl them up. Um, I just like a bit of added, I always like a bit of added dimension on mine. There we go. And we don't need to worry about doing that with the um, silver foil. In fact, it would probably damage them if I tried to do that. <laughs> Alrighty. So now we can put together our flowers. Now to do that, I am going to use a little bit of um, Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue to just... Uh, put my flowers together now for the large one let's just move my base out of the way I don't want to get any glue on that for my large one I'm going to be using the large and the medium and they're just going to be layered um, together like that so I'm just going to put a bit of multi-purpose liquid glue in the center there I'm just going to line up the petals so that they are offset from one another of the two different sizes as you can see there and there we go that's as easy as that is and we'll do the same with the little one so I'll put oh this time I'm doing it the other, other way I'll put the glue on the the bottom one and then put the top one on so you can do it whichever way I just did that back to front to what I normally do but that's okay it still works I normally put it on the base of the one that I'm going to put on top but you can do either there we go all right, now we'll, we'll add our pearls at the end, okay? Um, so they are ready to go down now. I'll just make sure that they are. So we've got, got those ready. So let's bring back in our card. Okay, now we are going to, I'm going to pop these flowers down like so. And they're going to overlap a little. I'll get that one to overlap and we might have to tuck that one under a little bit and then we're going to um, position our leaves now I want, want this leaf here so I'll probably need to have my flower up a little bit further there we go all right so I'm going to first put down my um, oh and in, in fact this one I can actually put my leaf down first because I know that's where the leaf is going to go and I've got my leaf Oh, yes. No, that's around the right way. I thought I had my leaf around the wrong way then. No, that's right. That goes that way. So I'll put my leaf down first. And I'm just putting glue just on the tip of my leaf there. Because the rest is... Oh, hey, Megan. How are you? Great to see you. So I'm popping that down there. And I'm having the leaf so that it goes right to the edge of my card. But just being aware to not let it go off the edge of my card because remember that you need to fit this into an envelope. So you want to make sure. <laughs> and they are all needed. What What is all needed, Tina Marie? I'm not quite sure. There we go. All right, now with our large poinsettia, I'm going to just put a whole whack of glue there in the middle. Okay, like that. And then we're going to just pop that down there over that leaf. And keeping an eye on those petals that they don't go out over the edge of your card because you want to fit that into your envelope. Oh, adhesives. Yes. <laughs> yes, got to have all the adhesives. Well, they all have different purposes. They're all good for different things. Now with the next leaf, I'm going to slip that under this time. So I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the end there. So this is another good reason to just put the glue in the center of your flower because then you've got space to actually slip your, your flower under and you can just poke it in to where you want to have it. And if you have a bone folder or you've got another tool, you can just slip that in under and just rub where you've put the glue on that leaf to make sure that that um, is going to stay put. Okay, and then we'll put our small poinsettia. We'll do the same thing. So just glue in the center, 
pop that down we want that to overlap a little bit there like so beautiful we're going to pop another large leaf at the top it's actually quite an easy card to put together um, if you, you've got those dies and the stamps that just do all the hard work for you and then you basically just layer it all together and it's beautiful so I'm going to pop that leaf in there and I'm just going to get my bone folder in there to just press that down to make sure that stays put yep and then we've got our little leaves Glue dots. Glue dots would also be a great idea, Jenny. Yes, you can use glue dots. Hi, Jenny. I didn't even know you were here, actually. <laughs> it's great to have you along with us. Yeah, glue dots would be good too, Jenny. You could also use them. We have so many adhesives. Oh, thanks, Jenny. You like this card? That's good. All right, so we'll pop a little leaf up there. I'm going to try and poke another little one down here as well and poke one in under there have that coming down that way there we go beautiful now we've still got our little silver berries to pop in too we're going to poke them in here and there as well so again I'm just ah oh, thank you so much Tina Marie it's um it's a beautiful beautiful suite like I think any card made with this suite will be beautiful because it's just got so many beautiful elements to this suite all right so I've just put glue just little bits here and there and I'm just going to poke that in I'm going to poke one down in here having that come out there between the the um the leaf and the the flower again I'll just use my bone folder just to sneak in under there to make sure that glue is catching on there we've got one we're going to put up the top whoopsie one that we're going to put up to top yeah so it's really not a difficult um, card to put together you just have to have the um, the right tools so the stamp set and the dies and the designer series paper and yeah, basically you need the suite. <laughs> it's really, really pretty. It's a really beautiful suite. Yes, I do, Megan. I have them. They're just here to, off to the side. I'm going to add them at the end. I already showed everyone those ones. And I just was um, going to leave them till we got all the other bits on. I'm going to add them at the end. I always like to add my bling at the end. There we go. So you'll notice I'm not sticking down all of those little berry parts either on the silver because I want I want that dimension for them to um, be sitting up. Some of them are, I have put glue on those two there just to hold them in place. But um, the other ones are going to be loose. And this one, I'm hoping to fit down here, but let's see. Oh, yep, it'll go. Good, good, good. Put a bit of glue there on the stems and that lower one there there we go and we'll tuck that in here see where we can tuck that in there there we go oh. that one's caught there come on out of there hang on where's my take a picture need my take your pick tool let's see if I can get that one back out a little bit I'll move that over a tad just need to move that over a tad there we go I have that one coming out from there so just make sure that is all well adhered in there there we go okay so let's now add our little centers now for the centers because they have a metal backing I'm not going to use the liquid glue because I'm not sure how that will 
adhere with the liquid glue I think I'm going to use the glue dots the glue dots are great for adhesives and especially the any of the metal back adhesives the glue dots um, always seem to be the best adhesive so what you can do is just pop them onto your glue dot like that okay and then you just lift them off and they've got the glue dot already there on the backing for you so you can just then pop your little pearls down and that one too oops and put that one up a little bit higher there we go oh doesn't that just set them off so beautifully just gorgeous 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 the good thing with the glue dots too is they are a little bit movable you've got you can actually maneuver things around a little bit with them so that's good all right beautiful now we need our sentiment so I need to work out the length that I want to have my sentiment so I think I want to have it about there so I'm going to just trim that with my trimmer I actually might look, put a little pencil mark where I want to trim that so this is why I didn't um, I didn't cut it to begin with I just left it long because I wanted to work out exactly I wanted to get all of this down first and see how much white space I had there to fill so I'm going to pop that down there all right so I'm just going to quickly trim that on my trimmer there we go okay so there's our banner and we're going to just ink the edge of that with our um, dauber and our old olive ink ah oh, thank you everyone hey julie you're here too and glenda i don't think i said hello to you yet glenda hi glenda how are you it's great to have you along today so just use a dauber just to ink up that edge a little bit just to give it a little bit of something extra just to take away those harsh edges to soften that down a little bit there we go beautiful okay that is ready to go on our card so we're just going to adhere that completely flat and I'm going to use a little bit whoops because it's going on to the um, the fuzzy bits I'm going to use a little bit of tear and tape so there you go I've used all different adhesives today so and I'm just going to adhere it down flat I'm not going to mount it because I want the um, poinsettias to be the heroes of the card but I still want to have the sentiment there but if you wanted to mount it up on dimensionals you could um, I just I'm going to keep it flat there we go and we'll pop that on take off the backings from our tear and tape make sure there's no overhang there and oops we will just pop that down just about there and we're lining that up with the edge of that gorgeous flocked vellum there we go done beautiful all finished so that was actually really quick to put together because we are I had already done all the die cutting prior so everything was ready prepped to go um, but you can see how it's actually quite easy to put that one together if you just have the equipment if you just have the the tools ready to go so oh you've shared it thank you so much Tina Marie awesome oh thank you Rose thanks glenda thanks megan thanks julie i'm glad that you all liked that but it is a gorgeous gorgeous suite so if you haven't seen that suite yet go to the um august to december mini catalog turn to pages 14 and 15 let me get the lights up a bit so we haven't got quite so much glare and that is the poinsettia place suite and there's even some samples there in the catalog for you if if you're a bit stuck as to what to do there's some samples there there's some more samples over the other page as well 
that has the the images of the um, stamp set but yeah so look out for that suite it is really beautiful those products are just adorable and um i can't wait to play with it a bit more it's really beautiful and that's the first card that i've actually done with it by the way and um, this is my first play with it so i really really love that and i love just that added um, curling of those leaves just gives that added dimension if i hold that up like that you'll see oh i just noticed holding that up like that the end of my silver branch there was sticking up in the air hang on a minute let me just sneak under here and i'll just make sure that's down flat there we go <laughs> thankfully i did that but yeah you can see all that beautiful dimension on that card and i just love dimension and texture on any card so hopefully you can see all of that there so there you go all righty so that is um our project for today so let me just click click uh click click and click oh my goodness flip is the word i'm looking for <laughs> let me flip the camera up so that i can say goodbye to all of you in person um, i always like to do that face to face so let me just cover up the camera and i'll flip that up and just give me a moment okay i'm just about with you there we go okay so i hope you all really enjoyed that i'll sh show my card again there it is it's really beautiful isn't it just so pretty and all that texture you've got the texture of that beautiful flocked vellum you've got all the texture there in the cardstock um, all being dimensionalized um, and even the texture here of the pearls as well because they're just beautiful as well yeah so thank you all so much for joining me today it's lovely to have you along with me each week when I'm crafting and um, the washi tape gives a really beautiful blue hue oh when I <laughs> when I cover my camera <laughs> Well, that's nice. It's better than looking at a black screen. That would be boring. <laughs> Maybe I should change colors. I should do bright pink or something. <laughs> yeah, I use washi tape to cover up my camera. That's my little secret. So that's why you have a blue screen when I cover up the camera. <laughs> uh, it makes a good little cover. Uh, well, thank you so much all for being here today. I look, I make it look easy. Oh, it really is, Rose. It really is. You just piece all of those little pieces together. You just stamp, die cut, stick it all together and then put it on. Slip the leaves underneath. It's, it is really quite easy. Not difficult at all. Anyone can do it. You can do it, Rose. You can do it. And when you do do it, I'd love to see a photo. <laughs> Oh, Tina says, no pink. <laughs> you don't like pink, do you? <laughs> Blue is her favorite color. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful week. I hope you all get some crafting time in there as well. Um, remember about the um, get and go starter kit promotion at the moment. If you know that you're going to be purchasing a lot of product, then consider um, join, joining and purchasing that starter kit and getting that discount and remember at the moment with that get and go promotion you get all those additional products you get two free stamp sets a pack of um, pearl rhinestones you get 16 card kits that you can then either make up or you can share them with others it's up to you how you use them everything is pre-cut in those kits for you and if you do um, join during the get and go promotion you will then have exclusive access to some uh, tutorials on how you can actually use those card kits and make up those cards or you can use them in any other way that you like it's totally your choice but yeah lots and lots of fantastic um, offers at the moment remember my offers that I have at the moment too for August and September I've got my special promotion um, 
So I spoke about that at the beginning. If you missed it, feel free to go back and watch the replay because I've got some giveaways and prizes and prize draws at the moment too for those that um, shop with me. So have a great week, everyone. I look forward to seeing you all again next week and um, hope you all stay safe and well. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.